When the mortal realm's in need of destruction, you better call on the Lord of Seduction. End of the world, it's almost time, but I'm gonna do it right, the perfect crime. Hmm, right. I'm done representing the Nash. Let me tell you about the first serving of axe snacks I laid out for those half the height but all the shine dimwit Dowie boys. Got things started with a couple of blasts from my hell cannon. And yes, it's just as deadly as it sounds. Does it shoot fire or something? Um, no, it shoots purple. Purple what? Just purple, okay? So why is it called the hell cannon? Is, is hell purple? One more word and you'll get to find out firsthand. Now, once the bearded battalions got close, I quickly moved to surround the enemy. Now I should tell you about my lovely soldiers, heavily armoured for the most part, and man enough that losing pints of blood from enemy crossbow fire didn't even make them flinch. And they were armed with deadly weapons blessed by the corn dog himself, big enough to skewer up a three-dwarf kebab and pretty enough to raise the eyebrow of even the most sword-savvy Slashinista. Had a few tentacly beasts on the field, much less scary than they look. The best they'll do is give you a slimy slap and try to get you to tell them they're beautiful. At the other end of the army had some berserkers, the calmest berserkers you'll ever find as it turns out, so no point getting a half-mast over that. Finally had some horsemen, my cretinous cultist cavalry. Basically a bunch of middle-class gap year students from down south who'd come up in their pyjamas to get the chaos experience and sponge off me for free travel. Good at killing dwarves though, as it turns out, so not an entirely regretful addition to the horde, even if they spent half the time on the phone to their mothers asking what setting on the washing machine was best for getting out blood. So all I needed to do to win the day was remind my men that surviving the battle without a dwarven head to show for it would be far worse a fate than death if my pleasure cannon had anything to do with it. Is that a nickname for the hell cannon? What? No, you oaf. It's my god ram. My flubber to chubber transition position. My god a soap on a bottle opener. Uh, does it shoot purple too? <laughs> Next! The enemy eventually tried to escape, meaning we could let the spawn off the leash to frolic among the doomed Dorvan ranks. I myself had been showing the enemy commander what it feels like to have your fingers swapped for your teeth and vice versa. His cute little leg scurried him away, and I decided to let him go, knowing that we were en route to burn down his house anyway. We'd be able to finish the job and swap his nose for his fire hose later on. While we were crawling about inside of their little wear lair, I found the most marvellous hat, known to mortals as the Helm of Discord. It had drawings etched on the side that were so mind-blowing that any who saw them had their helmet blasted into the immaterium and then could do nothing but cover their eyes with their hands, losing their ability to fight quite rapidly. They say it shows you the image of what you fear most. Became quite the talking point after Slanesh came to visit. It's the big boy, the small bloke smoker, my shimmering slice master. How's it going, young fellow, me lad? Quite all right, thank you. You needn't ask every five minutes. Oh, I needn't drink a cosmopolitan every five minutes either. But just you try and stop me. Mm, it's that sugary sweetness that is my weakness. Oh, let's have a pint of the leg loose juice, governor. That's what I'm about, you know. You know, he knows. My lord. Why don't you open this box? Oh, a box! Now the drama's getting a bit too real. I can't wait. What's inside? The questions, the mystery, the conundrum. It could be anything. It could be the most glorious pair of socks. It could be the complete works of George Red Raw Martin. It could be a scrap of old newspaper with a doodle -doo of a man copulating with the letter G in the headline. Man wanted for pissing on the same part of the urinal as the guy next to him was already pissing on. It's a helmet. A helmet? I oh, hope for your sake that's an innuendo, my good lad. Let's see again there. Oh no, no! Get those pesky Jehovah's away from my humble abode, your Slanesh, blimey! Slanesh, they're gone. No! Oh, my boy, you should have seen them. Smiling faces, inoffensive choices of outfit, intent to spread goodwill and love throughout the land. Oh, it was horrible.
Happy in the knowledge that I could paralyze my overlord with a single vaguely worded leaflet about how everything was better in the Bronze Age, I continued on. Literally five seconds after I sacked the Dwarven settlement down to the last matchbox full of ex-girlfriend's fingernail clippings, the Dark Gods made a commandment saying that we must sack the settlement. Clearly paying close attention then, and not just loafing around in the realm of chaos seeing how long captured mortals survive in Nurgle's Dutch oven. Now of course I could simply go in and outright destroy the settlement, that would meet the cringe bag Korn's carnage quota quite quickly. But the wee chaps up to my kneecaps had built a wall of armoured, angry, axe-wielding beard sheep to stop me. To persuade them to deconstruct their act of appalling walling, I started raiding the local territory for all it was worth. But don't the dwarves live underground, in the mountains? Yes, well done, have a geography degree. So what were you raiding? Uh, wasn't the surface just a frozen wasteland? Surely there was no one there? I think that's your funeral you're thinking of. <laughs> Next. Whether there was anything to raid or not is moot, since the dwarves cared less about me and more about seeing who could create the largest bubble of fart trapped in the ice. Tried to draw their attention and escape the smell by raiding towards their capital, but the cigars were not forthcoming. I did learn that old Carl Slaughterborg was in town. He had the face for radio, but the grace to wear a colander over his head so we beings seeking the apex of aesthetics didn't have to carry a vomit bag at all times just in case we met him. Anyway, I decided to take a break, erect a ruinous monument if you know what I mean, and retrain my troops. To try and get them up to snuff, I realized I should hire a great warrior to show them the ropes. Naturally, the recruiter went to the local group of Carl Franz cosplayers for a volunteer. Finally found the perfect man for the job, one H. Spawn Seeker. He had everything I needed in a warrior, except for a functioning set of eyes, but if you're looking for someone who isn't me, then you certainly can't have everything. Got less than I bargained for, actually. As soon as the job interview was over and I told him he was hired, he stood up from his chair to shake my hand, and from beneath the desk came nothing. Not the end of the world, yet. I'd heard of a famous wood elf prince who they called Legless, and I'm sure he got along just fine. And this chap seemed to be able to float above the ground so he could still see eye to faceplate covering soul voids with people. Still, felt I should have a word with the recruiter about all this. Nurgle, you steaming dumpling, show yourself! Oh, nappy boy, the pot. Oh, if it isn't the Vault's favourite cigar! <laughs> what can I do for you on this warm summer breeze of a day? You can tell me, O oh great god of deep-fried despair, why of all the fake Francis in the land, you brought to me, to act as my right-hand man, a creature with an anomalous relationship to the world of trousers, and enough eyes to correctly spell the phrase, results were absolute garbage. <laughs> Just a bit of fun and games, eh? Fun and games? I'm out there trying to turn the old world into an impressionist painting of an overcooked margarita, and you think this is the time for fun and games? Oh, great lord of pestilence, god of death, source of all disease and originator of all pongs worse than a two-day-old bowl of corpse flakes. Little Siggy boy, <laughs> lighten up. Spawnseek is a lovely chap, really, and a fine swordsman. I'm not even sure if he has a sword. Just let him have his strange floaty way, and you'll be so happy with him you'll be back on old Grandfather Nurgle's knee, asking if I have any more friends as delightful as he. I'll hold you to that, great unclean one. Although perhaps a courtesy bowl of nose pegs would be nice next time. The dwarves still weren't coming out to play, but I realised I could just go burn down one of their outposts to see if that would tempt them to peek out of their beards and witness their destruction. Just as I finished up, I had an idea, a simple idea really, and one I'm surprised didn't occur to me earlier. I should go and kill some people. With that goal in mind, I had a look to the south and saw a moorishly mortal mix of humans and orcs having a dispute over the teeth-to-chickens exchange rate. 
stepped in to settle the score with swords and gore, but the greenskins were yellow-bellied, as it turns out, leaving only the humans to slaughter. Better than nothing, I guess. While I was distracted, burning down houses so ugly that property prices broke the world pole vault record, the orcs snuck up into Dwarf Town. Decided to chase them so I could get back into the killing of pint-sized porridge munchers as planned, but interestingly the orcs tried to tunnel their way under my horde to escape. From D6 to D20, it was certainly no dice. So there we were, in the inexplicably well-lit underway, about to see if my hench huskarls could deal with being run over by a load of boars bearing bludgeon-bashing beasts. Not really is the answer, but luckily the orcs weren't really au fait with military tactics, so they hadn't got anything to support their attack, hence it failed faster than an Irish Alcoholics Anonymous program. Ordered the troops to charge out and destroy the oncoming wave of baritone toddlers, I myself making sure to single out their leader, the best opponent available, and still like fighting a puppet made of cabbage supported by strings that exploded upon contact with anything green. My gap your gringos had a jolly good time show jumping their horses into the enemy archer lines, and the main fight in the centre quickly turned in our favour when I whipped out the old helm of discord I told you about earlier. Put it on, and suddenly the orcs were paralysed with fear in the face of an image of Gork and Mork signing the Geneva Convention. Their ability to fight plunged to approximately zero, according to my analysts, and at the same time their leader fled before my deadly dexterous dance. You'd think it would be over right then, but even with the enemy having a 0% chance to dodge attacks, we still needed our men to work out which end of their swords were the sharp ones, and to realise that the weakness of the enemy was having their heads cut off, not witnessing a gang of human cooking pots clatter about like a poorly secured rack of wine in the back of a 1936 juice and a half driving stubbornly along the sleepers of the Trans-Siberian Railway. So, did you win? Of course we won. Old world is gone, isn't it? We always won. If you wanted a story where people lost out, go interview the guy who bought a new microphone so he could play No Man's Sky co-op. Killed all the damn orcs. And then... Well, I'll, I'll tell you next time.